Seamus Ennis getting some quizzical looks in 1965.
<laughs> that now is N flat minor. <laughs> you can all tune in on that beam now. And I'm up in a heap because I have a microphone cable here leading into my coronary thrombosis and things like that. I could play also, I could play you a, a tune on my coronary thrombone and I can also play another tune on my dislocated clavichord. So good. We should play Danny Boy. My mother used to love Danny Boy. Well, now we can uh, switch the changes on the weather. We don't really have to call Kehe Shin Mo at our Bati Fuor Fluch at our Reba Mugarish Kunta. 
Emunachnik, Ned of the Hill. Who is that without, uh, who has an edge on his voice and he tearing at my closed door? Uh, I am Ned of the Hill. I am drowned cold and wet from eternal walking of glens and mountains. These people enjoyed my visits too. I sang strange songs for them, and it seemed they couldn't do enough for me when I played on my pipes for them. That's an old one, my father's version of uh, the kid on the mountain. Identification, we called it the mist on the mountain, which is a great contrast to our warm fire here, our pleasant company. The mist on the mountain, Kion Gnok, the mountain mist.
jig, single jig that Pat Ward played and uh, my father learned it from Pat Ward and Pat Ward had no name on it and for identification purposes my father called it Pat Ward's jig and it goes like this now remember a single jig is a 12-8 measure as opposed to a 6-8 measure, which is called a double G. from Dublin and had never before heard Count the Rock. That night, however, Neil Angus MacDonald, schoolmaster of Eldercary, a piper also and the son of a piper, kindly made two complete recordings of Count the Rock. I had lived long years in Ireland, but I had never seen an Irishman entranced until that night. And I spent six months out there. That was the winter of 46, 47. When I was out in the island of Barra in the winter of 1946, Miss Annie Johnston, who was a school teacher in Castle Bay, sang me this song. She told me it was the song the old people had taken from a dying swan. As you know, the swan never sings, only when it's dying. And this is the song the swan has when it's dying. Kivik, 
I'd like to play for you a reel composed by my father in 1913 or 1914. I found his manuscript at home and I learned the reel from the manuscript and he was delighted to hear me playing it. He called it the morning thrush and he entered it for a competition in the Fesh Kjol, I think, at that time and won the competition. And he was inspired by a thrush which used to sing in the morning in a tree outside his bedroom window. And nowadays I hear the thrush at home and I can get some of the phrases of the tune from the thrush as I hear it. This is the way it goes, the morning thrush. Hello, men. Hail to ye, blithe morning pipers. <laughs> How are your drones functioning? Reasonably well, Seamus. Reasonably well. And are the boys and behaving themselves? Liam O'Gofflin, one of the best known of our younger generation of pipers, teaches one of the many piping classes at the Willie Clancy School. The piping classes and workshops are extremely popular, and the students come not only from Ireland, but from all over the world. Well, Liam, and fellow pipers all, the air that I propose to play is a Rutu Egingari. Were you at the Rock or were you at Carrick? Uh, for your interest, it was a, an air, the words of which it was sung as a code during the penal times, when mass used to be said on a rock in the mountains, and the vestry and chalice uh, everything was hidden in the vicinity of that rock. And uh, the, the verse, oh, the opening verse is in the form of a question. <coughs> Were you at the rock? Did you see there my love? Did you see the beauty, the freshness and fairness of the woman? Or did you see that apple tree of the sweetest and most perfumed bloom? Or did you see my Valentine, or is she in trouble as they say she is? And the answer then to that, well, I was at the rock, I did see all this, and I did see your Valentine, and she is or she is not in trouble as they say she is. If she is in trouble, then Mass would be elsewhere next Sunday, if anywhere. But she is not in trouble as they say she is, it was clear that Mass would be in the same place next Sunday. And I learned this song from an old man in the county home in Ennis. 
he was I th he was named McNamara. I think it was Martin McNamara. And this was in 1943. And he was a native speaker of Irish from Crosheen in East Clare. And the Irish that he spoke was uh, really very close to the Irish of the Daisies, mm -hmm. Waterford Irish. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was as the, the version of the tune that he had. And I consider it goes very well on the pipes. Seamus plays belonged to his father. He went to London in 1908 to take part in a flute playing competition. He won the competition and spent the prize money on a set of pipes which he found in pieces in an old sack in a small London shop. He recognised them as having been made by a man called Coyne in Dublin around a hundred years before. The pipes are now 170 years old. sixties, Seamus and Liam were part of a group called the Haypenny Bridge Quartet, with Liam on pipes, Seamus on fiddle, Sonny Brogan on accordion, and Sean Keane also on fiddle. My Liam. I imagine, Seamus, that there are very few people Realise that uh, you're also a fiddle player. Well, we'll call it fiddle playing. <laughs> yes, indeed. This next tune, The Wind That Shakes the Barley, was something of a signature tune for the Haypenny Bridge Quartet.
Fon an Arain an Gavin Galban, Kian Dalum Shay o Eilish Bani Cronin as Balivurna Kunde Horki, Le Lindo of Vet in a Valihor and Jin, Snadahadi. Tashai Ahenemer, Clor the Kid RTA, Humors of Donnybrook, Emilian is a Najak Shaftus and Nay, Tra Reb Shemus Ennis, Ek Chana, Ladera Ahil.